Hello, welcome back to today's video. So today's video is very much overdue. I was supposed to film this literally in June and it is now the 31st of August. So it's basically September. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about my first year experience as a computer science King's College London student in London. What? So the first question we have is if you could have done anything differently, what would you do? So I feel like there's a lot of things in first year that I'm not gonna do again this year, but I don't regret that I did them then because they taught me a lesson. So number one thing, I thought like a really bad sleeping schedule was fine. I thought it was the uni life. It was just like the thing that happens, but I really want to work this year on not ruining my sleeping schedule for university because it is not worth it. Okay, maybe if once in a while I want to go clubbing, that's fine, but I consistently went to sleep at like 4 or 5 a.m. in first year. So that's the number one thing I'm going to really prioritize in second year. Another thing that I definitely did wrong is I did not go to basically any of my seminars so when uni first started we had seminars but they felt really pointless because they were online and like four or five people would show up in the beginning and it was just so awkward and I was just like this is a waste of my time like this is about like three hours a week of seminars and I don't learn anything from them so I think I attended like the first three seminars and after that I basically never went again literally I must have had like around a hundred to two hundred seminars and I went to around five I still did pretty well this year year so it didn't hold me back too much but like it was with a lot of struggle I feel like if I would have went to seminars I wouldn't have struggled as much as I did another thing I wish I would have known about in first year would be Perlego which are actually the sponsors of today's video when you first start university you're usually told to buy all of these expensive textbooks because you're gonna be learning from them all the time but majority of the time you don't actually finish them or you don't use them as much so you end up wasting a lot of money on books so this is where Perlego comes in basically Perlego is a website that will allow you to get all of these really expensive textbooks for a lot cheaper. It's a subscription-based online library that gives you access to over half a million textbooks for less than the price of one. And you can filter by topic, author, publisher, or date. You can also organize your personal library and track your reading progress on each textbook. You can search for different keywords in the book and then you can highlight it and make notes on it. And as students, we really need to save as much money as possible. So Prolego is really a perfect resource. Also, it's a digital and paperless resource. So when you move around to like a new accommodation, you're moving in with your friends, you don't have to bring all your textbooks every time. It's literally everything is on the website. Like <laughs> you don't need to bring anything. So yeah, make sure to visit prolego.com to try it out for free. And also make sure to use my code ANNA21 to get 25% off of your first three months. And yeah, let's get back into the questions. Another thing I wish I would have known is that you have to do a lot more further research than you think. So I feel like with school what I was used to is I just learn what they give me and that's that like I don't really have to learn anything extra I just learn exactly what I'm given but in university It's not really like that. But for example for seminars I tried to start attending them again when second semester started, but I literally couldn't I felt so intimidated because it's just like I understood the core topic that they were talking about But I really didn't know what they're talking about because these people seem so like knowledgeable and like they really understood the topic they didn't just like know what was given to them. They knew more than that. They knew like further and I felt so lost. So in second semester, I tried to fix my seminar problem, but then I was too intimidated because I hadn't done the research and then, yeah. And then another thing is also just like, don't feel intimidated. I know it's a lot easier said than done and I will definitely feel a lot of imposter syndrome in second year once again, because I feel like computer science is one of those subjects where a lot of people come into it already knowing how to code. They already know how all these things work and I'm one of those people that knew nothing going in and I still don't really know anything so I'm definitely gonna feel imposter syndrome a lot and I'm gonna feel intimidated a lot but what I wish I'd known in first year is just to stick through it because you only learn when you're uncomfortable if you come to a seminar and know everything they're talking about you're not gonna learn you're gonna learn when people know more than you and you learn through them or like you do your own research so so the next question is very specific but it's how did you use your iPad as a computer science student so the reason I wanted to answer this question is because you guys do not understand how many times a month I get the question iPad versus computer for university so personally if I were to ever recommend anyone iPad or computer for studies I would always say computer so I think the biggest reason that iPads are like as popular as computers in university and stuff is because a lot of people like handwriting their notes I personally don't like taking notes I don't like handwriting them I don't like typing them it's really bad but I really don't like taking notes so for me 
in that sense the ipad doesn't really help the only reason i ever actually used my ipad was for my mathematics modules so if you're doing mathematics in uni or anything related to like doing calculations like physics economics engineering computer science i would say an ipad is very useful you can definitely survive without it but if i had to choose one i would definitely choose my computer yeah i wouldn't be able to survive without my computer i think for computer science pretty much need a computer <laughs> it's kind of in the name of the degree were you nervous on your first day of university i was very very nervous and i don't know why because our first day of university was fully online like you can literally watch it back i think i vlogged my first day of uni and it was just like me in my room <laughs> on a lecture being like hi i didn't even say anything there was like no speaking involved if it was just listening so i was nervous but i think if it was in real life i would have been 10 times more nervous the thing is real life is a lot easier in my opinion i'm really 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 bad at talking to people online if you're my friend you will know this i cannot text back i'm a very bad texter so yeah i'm a really bad communicator online so i can't wait for us to have some things in real life but first day of uni this year will be scary because i think my induction week is in person potentially i'm not sure i think this year i will be a lot more nervous than last year but don't worry i will vlog it all so you will see it do you think you were shy for your first year of university my answer is kind of like 50 50 because i think the first month of uni i was like all shyness was gone guys I was like extrovert meeting new people every day. I went out of my way to make plans with people But I think after like November when we went into like a proper proper lockdown my Socializing skills went like this and ever since then it's been a bit difficult to like open that book and be sociable Sociable why is my English like struggling this whole video? So I think out of the like nine to ten months of uni I was only like really 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 out there for one month. So you might be like, what do you mean? How is that? 50 50 but the reason i think it's 50 50 is because you meet majority of people in your first month like in the first month you're gonna meet so many people i cannot even explain to you i feel like i literally met more people in like three days in the first month than i met like in three months towards the end so the fact that i was really 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 like open and sociable on the first month i think i was 50 50 because yeah i was very like closed off for the rest of the nine months but the first month i was really out there where was your student accommodation i really like your room so if you guys want to see my room i did a full room tour on it and i was staying at angel lane obviously i didn't want to tell people where i was in the moment because that's where i was living it's only for king students but it was a very 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 nice accommodation what i'm gonna say is it was pretty far for sure like i think if we were going into university every single day we had to go to campus we had to go to lectures it would be far i think it would be a bit of a struggle but i think with lockdown it was like the perfect place to be because we never really had to go central so traveling was never an issue and in general angel lane is located in like a really really convenient place someone said i want to study computer science but i'm too bad at math what should i do i think you should go for it personally i chose a mathematics module but you do not have to choose it so let's just pretend the mathematics module that I chose was not there because the majority of my course did not do this mathematics module is just because I really like maths so I really wanted to do it if that module wasn't there I actually didn't think the course was very mathsy like I think obviously there was a lot of maths fundamentals in the background like we had like a foundations of computing module and in it there was a lot of like logic and logic is kind of based on maths but not really like it doesn't really feel like you're doing maths at all the next question is are you still going to stay in student accommodation so the answer is no i'm currently already moved into a house with my friends and i don't think i will ever be back to student accommodation but that makes it sound like it was a negative experience it literally was not a negative experience at all if i could go back in time i would do the exact same thing because i feel like in first year every single person should go to accommodation if you can it lets you meet so many people it just puts you out of your comfort zone a lot and it's just like i don't know it's cool to experience living with like 10 people at a time it's definitely not something i want to keep going like i think sharing a kitchen with 10 people is a lot all of my closest friends were made in accommodation actually we're gonna like segue into the next question but someone asked how did you meet your current housemates so i'm currently living in this house with jisoo hana and viola and you guys have seen 
seen them in my previous vlog. I don't know which video is going to come out first, but they're in my moving vlog. They're in my trilingual study vlog. They're in like my skating weekly vlogs. They're in a lot of vlogs. So Jisoo was one of my nine flatmates in my accommodation. So I would have known her anyway, but we weren't really close for the first month because she had just moved back to the UK from Korea. So she was meeting up with her friends and family and she was like socializing a lot. So the first month I literally basically didn't see Jisoo. We weren't close. And then I think we started getting close over like tattoos because she was saying like, oh, I kind of want to get a tattoo. And then obviously, as you guys know, I have kind of like a tattoo obsession. So we were talking about tattoos and we were also talking about joining societies, I think. So we slowly started to get closer. And then it was Jisoo's birthday. And for her birthday, she invited her friends that she met at like a medicine meetup. And that is where I met Han and Viola. So all of my housemates are medicine students. <laughs> so I feel very left out. But yeah, they all met at like a medicine meetup, but they were all in the same accommodation But yeah, we started spending a lot of time together and also like it was locked down So we couldn't really meet other people outside of our accommodation So we spent like extra time together and we all got closer and then I don't remember what month it was But towards like February, I think we were like, ooh, what if we all live together? <laughs> And yeah, here we are. <laughs> the next question is, what were your subjects in first year and what grades did you get? So I'm gonna have to open up my portal because I honestly don't think I'll remember every single name. Since this is kind of like two questions in one, I'm just gonna read out like the module that I did and the grade I got for it. The first module I had was mathematics for engineers. That was semester one and I got 69 out of 100. So I got a two one, which is, is not annoying, but it's just the one point. Computer systems was a semester one module. I got 80%, which is a first. So the next one is database systems. This was a second semester module. I got 87, which is also a first. Next module is foundations of computing one, which was a semester one module. And this module to this day, I don't understand. Like this is my favorite module out of all of them. And I got 42. It's just really confusing because it was my favorite module. And at the time I was like, I think I'm gonna get the best mark on this module. Like it was my favorite module. And then it was my worst, like in grades. I don't know, but it's fine. I still pop. So that's all I care about. The next module was introduction to professional practice. This was zero credits So it was just like there was no exam or anything. We just had to take it. It was very boring I got 75, but that doesn't really mean anything because you don't get anything for it The next module was introduction to software engineering. This was second semester. I didn't love this It wasn't that bad. There was a lot of coursework I got 65 which is a 2-1 and then the last module I had was programming practice and applications and this was was a module spread over first and second semester. So I got 76, which is also a first. This module was the only module that actually was just all coding and we just learned Java for all of it. So overall, I got a first this year, which is very good, but I was very, very close to not getting it. Regarding coding languages, in first year, we literally only learned Java and SQL. I think this year we're literally learning like eight, which is like so intense. I'm not prepared for it. I feel like this year you guys will get a lot more like proper study vlogs because what I've heard a lot from UK students is that first year computer science feels a lot like a level computer science with like a little bit extra because a lot of people don't have computer science in their schools so they kind of have to get everyone to like the same level so for example for me like I didn't have computer science in my school because in Ireland like we didn't have computer science as an option at the time but second year from what I've heard is when we're going in and I'm scared <laughs> what was your favorite and least favorite module so as I told you guys my favorite favorite module was foundations of computing one and I got the worst grade in that so I don't know what that's about <laughs> and my least favorite was probably introduction to software engineering it was very like theory based and I don't know I don't really remember them that well to be honest but I feel like at the time that was one of my least liked those are kind of the only questions I can answer with my experience now I did a uni q and I think like three or like two months into uni and I remember there were a lot of questions like is London expensive is it it worth it like living in the city and that type of thing so if you want to go check out that video I answer those questions there because the answers to those questions have not really changed it was more like what would I change did I regret anything my grades and stuff that's like the type of things I could talk about in this video that I couldn't in the last video but my opinions about like living in London and stuff have pretty much stayed the same I think so yeah make sure to watch that video thank you guys for watching this video I'm very very excited to start the new year there's gonna be so many study vlogs I'm finally living really close to campus so I will be in the library all the time and I'll have seminars in real life and I'll be
be going to like freshers events and society events so finally this year we'll get a uni experience and I'll be able to document all of it with you guys and yeah I will see you guys next time peace out much love